Hi guys, it is a hot, miserable summer day here on the rock in the drought-plagued wasteland of South Austin, Texas. We have made it uh, to Friday, July 5th, 2013, which is Friday morning where I come to you each Friday with my ecological meltdown roundup, which is probably my easiest rant of the week where I simply go on to my email to share with you my uh, this newsletter, this environmental newsletter that I get from my heroes at mongabay.com, which means Rhett Butler and Jeremy Hance, who every week survey the mainstream, the alternative, and the scientific literature for more evidence that this planet is just headed into a brick wall at 23,000 miles an hour. So, this, so every day I go romping around the planet to see what news has cropped up in the past seven days. Uh, and, and, and this is, and of course, what they report on is the tip of the iceberg. And uh, then I am only going to choose a few of these just for the sake of time. We're going to head around the planet. Uh, to see how the planet has gotten us, we're seven days closer to Armageddon than we were seven uh, days ago. And uh, so, I guess Rhett has chosen to highlight the story. He's, we're going to start our, our romp around the planet in, in Costa Rica where we see the headline, Conservationists Urge Costa Rica to Maintain Environmental Leadership. Okay, a body representing hundreds of biologists and conservation scientists has urged the government of Costa Rica not to jeopardize its reputation as an environmental leader by allowing carve-outs. Don't you love these words they come up with? carve-outs from protected areas for industrial development. There you go. Uh, the conservation has warned that proposed projects that would require delisting of national parks for energy projects could undermine Costa Rica's green credentials. Do you think so? Do you think so? Turning uh, Costa Rica's world-renowned national park system into, uh, they're probably talking about who knows what, the uh, fracking or God knows what they're even talking about here. Alright, from Costa Rica over to India where we find the great Indian bustard. One of India's iconic birds once ranged across most of the Indian subcontinent. But due to the, 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 the usual list of suspects, guys, the great Indian bustard is also now India's rarest bird and faces imminent extinction. Uh, kiss goodbye, the Indian bustard. From India, we go over there to my favorite uh, continent to run about Africa, where we see the neglected giraffe, the world's tallest animal in need of conservation assistance. You know how all the, how the, how the elephants and the rhinos and the lions and the cheetahs have been stealing all of the thunder from the giraffe. But you better believe as, as Africa's population goes from 1 billion to 4 billion, the uh, population of Africa's giraffes will go to zero, uh, as will the populations of Africa's uh, elephants, rhinos, lions, cheetahs, hippos, good God, they are all going directly to zero. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Then they start uh, going back over there. Let's go back over to Southeast Asia to those fires. Uh, I, I love this one. Here we go. Asia, Asia Pulp and Paper has reported... Uh, guys, I, I can't make this up. Shut up. 
this giant planet eater, Asia pulp and paper, uh, intent on turning uh, the rainforest of, of Asia into pulp and paper, has reported an accidental breach of its moratorium on deforestation. How many lies can you fit in one half of one sentence? Accidental breach uh, of its moratorium on deforestation. Okay, here's uh, an Indonesian uh, environmental group uh, calling on the government to investigate 117 companies for alleged involvement in forest fires. Yeah, keep on calling. And then, and, and then for anyone uh, failing to draw the dots, I, I don't even know how many dots are, are drawn in this, uh, in this little headline and sentence. Indonesia to spend $10 million on cloud seeding scheme to reduce the haze plaguing Sumatra, Singapore, and Malaysia. There you go. That's the way we're going to uh, attack it. $10 million on cloud seeding. Uh, speaking of... Uh, Speaking of ten million dollars, uh, let's go back over there. I mentioned this one in my rant a couple days ago about Obama in Africa. Obama in Africa uh, pledging uh, Obama to take on elephant and rhino poaching in Africa. For the ten or fifteen of you who missed my rant from a couple of days ago, and you missed this news, here we are again. Barack Obama launched a new initiative against wildlife tracking, trafficking on Monday using his executive authority to take action uh, against an illegal trade that is fueling rebel wars and now threatens the survival of elephants and rhinos uh, announcing this in Tanzania. I, I, I mentioned this a couple of days ago. Uh, now of course guys remember this ten million dollars is one tenth one tenth of the money uh, that Barack Obama uh, uh, US taxpayers money that Barack Obama spent to visit Africa for three days uh, Ten percent of that budget going into his initiative to battle the illegal wildlife trade, guys. As I mentioned then, and since uh, since Red isn't mentioning it here, I will do it for him. The ramping up of trade between uh, the U.S. and Africa, which is nothing more, nothing less than an all-out looting. Uh, of Africa's resources, the, 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 the ramp up of that trade, what it will do to ramp up the illegal wildlife trade will completely dwarf this little $10 million of our taxpayers' money spent to fight it. If you want to fight anything in Africa, as I suggested then, we spend that $10 million on condoms and birth control pills and IUDs for Africans. We'll do a hell of a lot more. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yes. So this was the second time in a week that Obama has used an, an executive order, meaning the little dictator Obama, uh, skipping around Congress, has used an executive order to advance environmental policy after announcing a sweeping new climate change plan, uh, which is going to sweep us closer to Armageddon. Uh, I just, just mentioned in Iran a few minutes ago, uh, the, the gas and oil industry cheering on Obama's climate change plan.
Anyway, enough about Barack Obama. Uh, let's see. Going back over there to uh, Sarawak. I don't even know where the hell Sarawak is. I'm finding this influential British journalist banned from Sarawak. Uh, so th this woman calling out uh, the environmental policies over there. Uh, they just put her on a plane and sent her back wherever she came from, I guess, to England, which is better than we do in this country. When, when you call out these bastards in this country, like if you're Michael Hastings, they kill your ass. They just kill you. Uh, here in the U.S., uh, over there in Indonesia, they just put you on a plane and send you back home. Okay, from there... Let's see, we're going over to Australia again, guys. I'm remaining purposefully ignorant about this whole horseshit red program. Uh, I've been uh, talking about how Panama has rejected this bullshit carbon trading scheme to save the planet. Now we find uh, Australia terminates landmark red project in Borneo. Australia is ending its major forest refor restoration project in Indonesian Borneo. Uh, see, uh, Manga Bay and Rhett, they're big champions of red. Uh, they're going along with uh, Al Gore's horseshit. Now, guys, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, into red. I don't know whether Al Gore's plan to save the planet is going to work or not. I just noticed more and more countries who did buy into it backing out of it. Anyway, okay, now let's go from Australia to Chile where we find this newest frog. What's it called? Darwin's Frog. Uh, I guess it's called yeah Darwin's Frog. You can kiss goodbye. One more frog in Chile. Okay, uh, going uh, well. Let's go back to Australia. They 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 jump around. They they just put these on in order as they come, as these studies come out. So it's kind of jumping around the globe. Going back to Australia. Uh, guys, I'm just going to read this out. In age of climate change, Australia's vast coal fields could become worthless. Australia's huge coal industry is a speculative bubble ripe for financial implosion if, if, the world's governments fulfill their agreement to act on climate change. The warning, that's a big if, the warning that much of the nation's coal reserves will become worthless as the world hits carbon emission limits uh, comes after banking giant city also warned Australian investors that fossil fuel companies could do little to avoid the future loss of value. I guess that uh, these banksters at Citibank and, and whoever came up with this hilarious study uh, are not readers of Guy, uh, I'm, I, Guy McPherson and others, I, I guess. Uh, I, I guess Citibank hasn't been looking at what is it? These 455 coal-fired power plants getting ready to come online in China this year, as China and Indonesia and all these people that uh, that Australia sells its coal to are ramping up coal uh, coal burning. Yeah, right. Uh, Australia's vast coal fields could become worthless. Dream, 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 dream. Anyway, getting back to reality. 
getting back to reality. Let's go over and look at the latest meeting of these, of who are these guys, the International Union of uh, Critically Endangered National, anyway, I don't know what these guys, the IUCN, I don't know what the hell that uh, stands for. Okay, the headline, over 700 species added to the threatened categories on the IUCN red list. Okay, here we go. In the last week, in another sign, you think so? In another sign of the global biodiversity crisis, the crisis, the IUCN red list has added 700 and 15 species to its threatened categories of vulnerable, endangered, and critically endangered in this year's update. Let's see, as of this year, the Red List has evaluated 70,000 923 of the world species, including almost all of this planet's mammals, birds, and amphibians, and has concluded that at least 20,934 of this planet's mammals, birds, and amphibians are now officially deemed threatened or higher. Uh, due to overhunting, deforestation, disease, and I don't even know if they if they look at climate change or not. Climate change is nowhere mentioned in this story. Anyway, let's go over from that and from the IUCN to the Seafood Watch program. Are there in San Francisco seafood restaurants go sustainable? Okay, this is the Seafood Watch program who's come up, I've mentioned this before, this, this, this guide to sustainable, sustainably caught seafood, listing seafood choices in three categories, green, yellow, or red, meaning avoid. The guide informs consumers of the best option. Guys, the only option if you're concerned about the unsustainable over uh, fishing in this planet is the red option this is the one that this doomsday prophet took on january 1st it was my new year's resolution for 2013 to stop eating seafood there is no such thing as sustainably harvesting fish Every goddamn fish in the ocean is in the red zone of the ham bone sustainable fishing. Anyway, okay, we go from there to, to the sustainability of, of overfishing in the world's oceans to we're looking now at the sustainability. How many rants? Every time, every Friday, I mention this absolutely horseshit notion of the sustainability of palm oil and the world's rainforest. And so, this headline is not a a, a statement, but a question. This headline asks a question: Can palm oil be part of green growth in Indonesia? And the answer to the question, can palm oil be part of green growth in Indonesia, is the same answer to the question, can palm oil be part of green growth in Latin America or Africa? The answer to the question, for anyone not understanding the answer to this simple yes or no question is no, it cannot. There's an answer to that question. Moving along, 
Moving along, here we have uh, still staying over there, I guess in Indonesia, we have the, uh, the headline, Beaten and Captured Orangutan Dies in Indonesia. An orangutan in Indonesia's Aceh province died last Thursday after being beaten by residents of a local village attempt, or attempting to capture it. Now guys, I've had other rants and one of the first videos that actually got me to pull my head out of my ass back there in 2008 was a video uh, on, uh, on, uh, on orangutans and palm oil, which was a video about this female uh, orangutan that they had discovered in a, in a whorehouse over there somewhere, one of those god-awful hell holes over there, where this orangutan had been chained by her ankle for seven years in a whorehouse where all of these guys, as a joke, would actually come in and rape this, uh, this orangutan. For seven years, she was gang raped in a, in a whorehouse. And my guess is there's plenty of other victims of the palm oil trade, not just being beaten to death, but being raped in whorehouses. Are you understanding the level of hell going on on this planet? You can probably still find the video on YouTube about uh, this, uh, this orangutan. Anyway, moving on from the whorehouses of wherever. Here's one coming out of Suriname. Uh, talking about the sloths as what is the three-toed sloth uh, ramping up due to the scope of the region being cleared for cattle raising in Suriname. There you go. Okay, here's one from Suriname. Let's go over there to the Tar Sands of Alberta. Guys, this could be a whole nother rant. Activist and indigenous people plan healing walk in the sick tar sands landscape. All right, hundreds of activists, including Bill McKibben, Bill McKibben and Naomi Klein, are going into the heart of Canada's tar sands this week, not to protest the destruction of the local envir environment, but to pray for the healing of the land and the people. Native elders from all over North America will lead people past lakes of tailings wastewater and massive infrastructure of the tar sands industry along the Athabasca River in Alberta. I wish them luck in healing, healing the, uh, the Alberta tar sands as the government of Canada has announced that they plan to triple, the triple, the rape and pillage of the tar sands over the next 10 years, I believe. Okay, back to Sumatra, and guys, again, I'm just skipping over these for uh, the sake of time. Uh, the, Sumat the critically endangered Sumatran tiger may be even rarer than previously thought. Can you say extinct? How, how much rarer can you get? We can kiss the Sumatran tiger. Oh, goodbye. Oh, boy. Uh, guys, anyway, uh, is elephant poaching in Chad, uh, gold mining in Colombia. Guys, I, I, I could go on and on, but I'm sure uh, I, I'm getting sick of hearing myself talk and my brain is melting. 
Anyway, what is the last one they come up with? Back to Australia. Australia aims to end Japan's whaling. Hallelujah. Australia is hoping to put a permanent end to Japan's annual slaughter of hundreds of whales in the southern ocean in a landmark legal challenge that begins this week. All right. Australia, a vocal opponent of Japan's annual scientific hunts in the Antarctic, says it is confident that the International Court of Justice in The Hague will outlaw the hunts at the end of a highly anticipated case that is due to start on Wednesday. And uh, I wish my heroes in Australia, well, while they're not busy uh, digging up all the coal and selling it to China, they're calling out those whalers in Japan uh, and may the international union of, uh, I guess, whale rights uh, put an end to the madness. Although my guess, even if the international, that international court votes against Australia, it'll get the same reception in Japan as that, whatever that court of human rights uh, got from uh, Rafael Correa, which is this. Th this is uh, assuming that the International Union Court of Whale Rights does find Japan guilty of ecocide. This is what Japan, and don't forget Iceland and Norway, will, con will say to that court is, is this. This is the message from Japan. And anyway, that will wrap up this edition of the, what do I call this? The Ecological Meltdown Roundup for July 5th, 2013, because my brain is melting and I gotta get to the air-conditioned city library. Bye guys.